Today is the first day of severe weather preparedness week. Yeah. So, Brandon, we have some special guests that right. you're going to talk okay. to. So, Jim Coker and Melissa Sizemore are here from Jefferson County in May. And so, we are, we're going to bring them into the screen now. We're going to talk about um, uh, spring severe weather in Alabama, which is just part of life, yeah, honestly. It's been so boring. I know. Yeah. <laughs> right. A couple of months. Well, they had that tornado and then... You know, they've been yes. working on the recovery for that. and So we're going to let them update us yeah, on that. I feel like I've been currently. staring at their Twitter feed I know. endlessly lately. So. Well, let's start with that. How is tornado recovery going at this point? I mean, if you, if you could update people on that. Okay, before I talk about tornado recovery, I want to circle back to COVID-19. Oh, because did that it? is something else that we've been working on for nearly a year now. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to throw in a little advertisement right here. But if you go to our website you can actually sign up to get your vaccine. Oh, that's right. So, <laughs> so uh, and our website is jeffcoema.org. Just click on the green button. Or you can also call 205-858-2221. Okay. And that's the vaccine call center. So that's my little advertisement there. Uh, nope, I think so now we'll move on to the severe weather. That's great. I, I'm registering on their website as y'all talk. <laughs> okay, good. Good. <laughs> good. <laughs> Uh, well, as, as we all know, this is Severe Weather Preparedness Week, and I'm going to let Melissa talk a lot about it, but uh, just a few weeks ago, we saw why we have got to prepare every single day of the year here. Our tornado season is literally 365 days a year. Yeah. Uh, so an F3, F3 tornado hit us in January, and wow, you know, and this is now February. We still have the traditionally thought of spring months to go yet so um well melissa do yes. you want to update people on <coughs> on how recovery is going and like up in the fultondale area and everything of course so um we did have that ef3 tornado in the city of fultondale and center point as well as in unincorporated jefferson counties mm -hmm. and um what had happened was you know the tornado had touched down it, it carved a path of about 10 miles throughout those cities and jurisdictions. And we had about just under 300 um, buildings damaged and or destroyed, as well as 61 businesses that were affected as well. And as of right now, we've been working really hard and really diligently with the city of Fultondale and the city of Center Point to be able to provide um, the people that have been affected with the resources that they need to be able to start their steps towards full recovery. Um, Recovery is, ba there's baby steps when it comes to recovery. It doesn't happen instantaneously, but we're doing what we can to get those pe people, those resources that they need, whether it be um, clothes, food, goods, just to hold them over or be able to provide them some resources to help them start clearing debris off of their property, you know, clearing um, vegetation, things like that, and really get them towards the path to rebuilding um, on their property for the future. Well, and like Jim said, this is a reality we live with here, 365 days a year. And so what, what are the most important things you want to remind people during this um, pre preparedness week? Okay, this is something that I talk about all the time. You've got a toolbox. You need to have multiple tools that are your warning tools in your toolbox. Don't rely on just one thing. The tornado that hit the Fultondale Center Point area in the county, we use two primary methods that we operate to notify people. One is Everbridge, <laughs> which is the county-wide mass notification system, which you can sign up on our website to receive warnings there. It's free. It's free, and then the siren system. The night of the tornado in the Polygon, Everbridge, the mass notification system, notified over 50,000 contacts mm -hmm. in the Polygon of the warning, over 50,000. Over 4,000 of those actually let us know that, yes, they got the warning. So uh, that took under a minute to notify all those people. At the same time, the sirens that we operate also went off in the polygon. And there were 59 sirens that were activated more than once. Uh, of those, nine were damaged to some extent. Eight are now back in working order. And uh, one is not yet back in, back in working order because of a power issue. So we tell people all the time, you need multiple ways to get warnings. Those are your tools in the toolbox because you can't ever let your guard down. There's, Not here. There are several other notification tools that are out there and available for people to use. Um, like Jim said, our Everbridge, 
uh, notification system is a really great tool. It's free. People can utilize that and sign up. It takes less than five minutes to use or to sign up. Um, the sirens is another good tool, but don't make those sirens mm -hmm. that number one primary means of notification. Have other layers ahead of that because three layers is really key, especially if it's three separate devices. Okay. Another tool is pick out your favorite um, local news station and download their, their applications because if there's a power failure, you can at least pull up their newscast on your phone so you can watch where those storms are located. You can listen for your locations when our local meteorologists are doing wall-to-wall -wall coverage when we're expecting severe weather, that's another really good layer that you can add in that toolbox on top of maybe a NOAA weather radio. Those are about $30. You can get those at most department and sporting goods stores. And you can, you can call our office and we can help you program them over the phone. Or you can go to YouTube and find a way to program those as well. Um, those are a fantastic tool to have. They're loud. They will wake you up. Yes, and they, they have mm -hmm. <laughs> And they have capability uh, battery backup in the instance that you lose power. You want to be able to find all these different ways to receive these types of warning and notification, especially when there is no power, because you don't want to depend on something that's plugged into the wall or dependent or dependent on the physical power source itself, because God forbid there's a pow power outage before we get a, a severe storm or a tornado to come through here and you don't get that notification. Well, and we're so fortunate now to know so many days in advance when we ha are having a severe weather event day mm -hmm. and, and the local broadcasters do such a good job of making us aware and you guys do too. But, and part of that, you know, your, your tools in the toolbox, I would think would be your plan. Melissa, you and I mm -hmm. spoke last spring, probably like in last March, where we talked about um, for people who have to go to tornado shelters, you know, doing that in the COVID era, era, so to speak, and that's still the case this year. So remind people um, about the importance of those things, about being prepared in that kind of situation. Of course. So your plan can be as actually as detailed or you as you want it, or as simple as you want it. And if you're using um, public areas for sheltering or you're going to maybe a neighbor's house or a family member's house that may not necessarily be a part of that pre-established COVID bubble that we all kind of have in place at this point. Um, the best thing for you to do and what we advocate for, and same thing with local public health and the weather services, you always need to take care of the most immediate threat to your life. And in the instance of severe weather, that would be a severe thunderstorm or a tornado. So when you're seeking shelter in other places with people that may, not, that may be outside of that COVID bubble is really do social distance as best as possible with the people maybe in that area, wear a mask, pack hand sanitizer, you know, the same things that we now are so used to doing are things that you need to be doing when you're seeking shelter with other people. So watching your distance, wearing a mask, sanitizing yourself, treat it as if you're going to the grocery store, the Walmart, um, or just going out in public in general. It's, 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 we're all ingrained and we're all um, familiar with those processes now. So. Um, just make sure you're keep, you keep doing those COVID mitigation processes on top of your severe weather sheltering processes as well. Well, those are great reminders. Before we let y'all get away, we want to talk about the EMA's drone that you're able to use now too. Tell people a little bit about that. Okay, we were fortunate to acquire a new drone last year, and uh, this was actually money that we had in the reserve fund. We have a lot of hazardous materials incidents in the county, which really drove us to purchase the drone. Uh, Melissa is one of the drone pilots. Uh, we're all trained to some extent. She's a lot better than I am. But um, we've used it for hazardous materials in incidents. Uh, if you remember a few months ago, we had 5,000 gallons of acid spilled on the interstate. The drone was flying for that. So that allowed the, the fire department incident commanders to get a good eyes on view without putting their people in harm's way. We've also used the drone to fly the two tornado paths that we've had in the last uh, months here. Uh, the small one on the western side of the county, and then the most recent one. Uh, it is capable of sending back live video to the emergency operations center or anywhere else that we need to send it. Well, speaking of great tools, that sounds like a lot of help for you all. Anything else you want to remind people of while you're here before you go? Uh, yes, there is. Uh, when you hear the words tornado watch, that means it's time to really take notice. Uh, the, the recent tornado, the tornado watch was in place for several hours. You don't want to start your planning when the warning comes out. You already want to have your plan in place. Well, great reminder. We appreciate y'all being with us so much. 
And, and for those great reminders for everybody, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with more. <laughs> 